Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a card for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge, of which I am the host. And I took my own inspiration photo literally, and I went with sunflowers. <laughs> I'll have the photo posted uh, in my blog post, which is linked directly below the video. So I pulled out the Simon Says Stamp Sunflower Garden Stamp Set. I've done a few videos using this set. I love it. It's huge. And you guys know, if it's a big floral set, I'm in. Love it. So I have some Strathmore watercolor paper. And I have it in my Misty. And I'm going to ink this stamp up with Versafine Claire Fallen Leaves ink. It's just a nice really dark brown. And this time I am not heat embossing. I know. Not usually my norm. <laughs> I like to heat emboss my images before I do any sort of watercoloring. It's just, it's my little security blanket. But this time I wanted to do a bit of ink smushing first and I didn't want the raised edges of the heat embossing to get in the way of that. So the other day I was watching uh, a video by Christina Werner. I love watching her watercolor and she was using the same, like the Karen Brushmarker Pros and she did ink smushing first and I just loved it. I don't know why it never, like, you know, I've done messy watercoloring many, many times. I've shown in tons of videos, you know, purposely painting outside the lines and doing underpainting and all that sort of thing. But watching her do the ink smushing specifically at first with the markers, just like I'm showing here, and then she goes in and paints, you know, over it. And I was like, oh, I, I like that a lot. It For someone like me, who I am very still, like I'm just OCD, it's the, just the way I am, you know? But doing the ink smushing, it's putting colors somewhat controlled the way I'm doing it. However, there's still, you know, splotches and things are going to get in other spots and that's okay. I really like it. So I'm using just a stamp storage sleeve. I showed this in videos forever ago that I picked up um, from Nina Marie Trapani's videos. And this is the, this is the more controlled version of doing ink smushing, whether you're using ink pads, markers like this, etc. Um, smushing your inks first onto something like the packaging or just a piece of acetate, whatever, and bringing it to your cardstock that way, you do have more control versus just smushing your ink pads and then flipping your cardstock over onto it and just seeing what you get. Either way, I honestly don't mind, but this does allow you to place color a little more intentionally. But again, I'm st I was still letting it kind of do its thing. So I just kept scribbling the markers I was going to use onto the storage sleeve, my, my ink smushing sleeve. Is that what we were calling it? We had a, I had a name for it and ugh, it's been forever. And honestly, you could, I'm tired. <laughs> anyway, I did all of this. And honestly, you could, you could, I could have just left it like this. I thought about it because I was like, I kind of like it, you know, just the, the, the splotches and the splatters from the ink smushing, it works. And now I'm like, oh, I almost need to want to do this card again, just, and just do that, you know, and, and see if I can leave it. <laughs> but I really wanted to paint over this because that's what makes it, I don't know. I really liked watching that video and I'll link to Christina Warner's, um, video because it's just interesting to see how you know someone layers their colors and all these things and just the end result it's like I never would have thought that's how you got there you know what I mean and hers she did an actual a neat like hexagon shaped card which I never would have thought of in a million years that's just not the way my brain works and I love that too but I kept mine a2 sized because I wasn't gonna you know outright copy but anyway I used the exact same markers that I use for the ink smushing. So these are the Karen Brushmarker Pros. This is also why I use the Strathmore watercolor paper because I have yet to find any other watercolor paper that really works with these markers or at least works for me. And I just went in and painted. Now, since there is those other layers of colors from the smushing, and I'm using yellows, you know, for the, all these sunflower petals, you will see those splotches and the colors will mix a bit and that is totally okay you know I I kind of like the more organic feel of it all and it just it was fun and then the next thing I did as well to just step it up even more is I'm using my Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pen to do the actual watercoloring not a water brush not a paintbrush Aqua Shimmer Pen which 
funny enough, I have I had said in many videos, it was like, oh, I wouldn't do that. You don't want to wreck your aqua shimmer pen. It might absorb the ink. And then in a recent video, like just in this month, I, I tried it because I was like, oh, let's just see what'll happen. And yeah, really like it. <laughs> this combo, Strathmore watercolor paper and Karen Brushmarker Pros and an aqua shimmer pen, they just work. Everything just works. The ink moves around nicely. The aqua shimmer pen doesn't absorb extra ink. I do have like, you know, a cloth there that I'll scribble off if I need to. I didn't really need to because I wasn't using a whole lot of liquid really. Because with the aqua shimmer pen, just like with a water brush, you do not want to squeeze it because otherwise you're going to end up with like puddles of liquid. And yeah, you just hold it, paint, good to go. Um, the only other thing I would do different, I've done differently as I've shown is I'll squeeze the aqua shimmer pen onto my palette and then pick that up with, you know, a water brush or a paint brush or whatever. But yeah, so I just went along and painted all of the, the petals, the centers, the greenery. And then of course I'm going to add splatter as one does. So I used my Gonzai Tombi starry colors for the splatter. Um, this is the yellow gold. Yeah, I always hold the palette upside down, but yeah, it's the yellow gold. <laughs> this is actually the exact same color as the, uh, and it's by the same company, the Zig uh, gold, that liquid gold, a uh, gold mica that I was using in other videos. It's the same color, just FYI. So splattered that onto the background with my fan brush, let that dry. And then I pulled out the oldie but goodie big friend wafer dye from Simon. This came out years ago. It's still a favorite. I used just the word dye, not the outline. And I die cut it from some teal color cardstock, three layers stacked together with craft tacky glue. So it's got the dimension that I love so that it stands out a little bit. And off camera, I had also gold heat embossed one of the sentiments from the Sunflower Garden stamp set. And I'll use that when I assemble the front of the card. So the large sunflower stamp itself, I'd cleaned off and then I'm lining it up again in my Misty. And this time I'm going to stamp it onto the inside of my card. So my card base is going to be a top folding a2 sized card so four and a quarter by five and a half inches cleaned off the stamp this time i'm inking it up with simon's seafoam positively saturated ink it's just a nice light aqua ink on camera it looks very light but we just want to be able to see you know the image kind of ties in that teal color from the front but a lot more subtle and then the other sentiment i'm using this is from the so talkative stamp set and this came out last year I think we had an extra talkative stamp that came or set that came out in the September release at the beginning of the month this is like the precursor to that so this one's got a bunch of like really great larger sentiments which I love so I stamped that on the inside of the card with the fallen leaves ink and that my panel I cut down which I know bothers a lot of people when I do that I don't mind it. Honestly, it depends. Like if I've really done something like a no, well, I don't think I've ever done a no line coloring, like on a large, large image, let alone done like no line and then trimmed it down. Cause that would be painful when you put in a ton of time, but I cut this panel down to be smaller than my A2 card front. And I matted it with some of Simon's dark chocolate cardstock just to give a nice little frame and then I've got that sentiment that I had gold heat embossed onto just a scrap of dark chocolate cardstock and I trimmed off um, trimmed off the one side on an angle with my guillotine trimmer adhered that to the card front and then I'm ad adhering my die cut sentiment and I'd saved the dots to the eye and I just set them aside till now because it's so much easier to assemble it directly onto the card <laughs> It took me way too many years to figure this one out. But anyway, <laughs> put the little dots of glue, picked it up the, each little piece with my embellishment wand, stuck them into place. And now the whole sentiment is stacked and ready to go. And then the card front I adhered with Simon's Big Mama foam tape, just to give it a bit of dimension without too much bulk. And that finished it off. I did think about adding, you know, crystals and jewels and the kitchen sink and everything else. But I wanted the actual image to just stand out and it's got glitter i've got the flashlight on my phone here to show you guys 
somewhat in real life it's even like more glittery you know so I've got the glitter and the splatter and the ink swoosh background and all of that and this was fun so like I said in the beginning of the video I will have a link below the video to my blog post I'll have a link to the color throwdown challenge it's just a fun challenge a bunch of us do technically every week I have been a little behind as usual but uh anyone can play along it's just for fun just for inspiration and all that stuff so i'll have a link to that and i'll have, of course have links to everything i use so you can check that out below if you're interested thank you all so much for watching for thumbs upping and commenting subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you all very soon in the next video bye